Welcome back everyone, this is Jonathan here, and in the last video of this course, we managed to get our play player paddle moving up and down in the play space, but we have this problem where it can go off the edge of the screen. So we want to make sure that that player paddle only stays with on the screen. Now, just to give you the heads up, this video is going to get a little bit tricky with math and numbers and some weird code, so follow along the best you can, and don't worry if... Uh, it doesn't make complete sense. You can always go back to it later once you're more experienced and see if it does then. But for now, I'm just going to kind of show you how you can keep this on the screen. And this applies to basically any 2D game where you need to restrict movement to screen space. So let's just open up PowerPoint and take a look quick. Um, so we're going to have to be dealing with world coordinates here. And the way we, we restrict the movement of objects that we control is by using something called mathf.clamp. Now, basically, what we need to do is we need to calculate Unity's world coordinates so mathf.clamp can understand it. And basically, what mathf.clamp is is a way of restricting an object between two points, uh, either maximum height max, uh, or maximum width and the minimum height or minimum width. Now, the formula I've placed below is just for reference. This is essentially what you're going to be doing. Uh, I know that's kind of a lot to look at right now, but I, you can, like I said, you will be able to just follow along with this. And I'm gonna save myself some typing and just copy this over. So if we go back into Unity, I actually go, if we go back into our script where we left off, uh, we, we, I immediately know that we're going to need uh, some variables. So right in the start function where we initialize, I'm going to paste this in. And oh, doesn't uh, won't let me paste from PowerPoint. Okay, so I'm going to have to type it in. Dang it, my laziness backfired on me. So I'm going to declare a float. And I realized after the recording of the last video, we didn't actually talk about floats. Uh, floats are essentially numbers with decimal points in them. Uh, that's all there is to it. You have, if you're writing a decimal, you have to put the letter F after it. Uh, that's just Unity's personal quirk. So we're, need, we're going to need that float distance, and distance is going to be equal to uh, transform position dot Z of this paddle minus the camera dot main dot transform dot position dot z and we're just kind of getting the distance here between the paddle and the camera and storing it in a float called distance now right underneath this we're going to need to declare a vector 3 variable I'm gonna call this downmost and I'm going to say that this is equal to camera dot main and I'm just retyping this formula I showed you in PowerPoint dot view port to world point and open bracket new vector 3 0 0 and I'm putting in that float we just made distance and I need two close brackets and a semicolon uh, now 0 and 0 relates to the bottom left corner of the screen in uh, unity now if I was to create uh, actually hold on if I go to scene and create an empty game object I can move that around and I can see that the XY coordinates up here are roughly 8.85 and minus 4.9. I can wiggle those around a bit, but Unity doesn't uh, see it like that initially. So we need to convert the coordinates uh, that Unity sees to its world coordinates. Like I said, this is going to get a little bit confusing and technical, but that's what this formula is doing. It's going to basically give us these numbers down here. And uh, by default, we start with 0, 0, and up here is 1, 1. And we just need to get that conversion. So I'm going to go back in here now. And now I am going to copy this and go down a line and paste it. And I'm going to change this to upmost. And over here, I am going to say 1 and 1. OK. So now we need to start getting our math f dot uh, clamp into place. So there's a way that we're going to do this. And right after we've moved our paddles, we basically want to tell Unity that it has to uh, keep itself within our play space. 
So the way we're going to do this is we're going to start off by declaring a new float and we're going to call this float restrict y because we want to always restrict the up down that's the only direction we're moving in and here we're going to say it equals mathf dot clamp and we have our open and close brackets with a semicolon at the end and inside those brackets we're going to type transform dot position dot y comma and mathf dot clamp is like a vector three it takes in three things so and if we take a look down here in the it's showing us what we actually need to enter so first we're showing our the transform.position.y of our paddle and now we need to put those values in that we calculated so we would say downmost and upmost and now they're appearing red because we only declared these in the start method which means they're only usable in the start method so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these well i'm going to take uh, i'm just going to re retype them up here as private variables so i'm going to go private vector 3 down most semicolon and private vector 3 up most and now we don't need to declare them again so I can just get rid of the word vector 3 over here they're already declared and now I can hit save and uh, there's just one more thing we need to do we need to actually tell the transform dot position uh, what our coordinates what our restricted coordinates are. So we're going to say it's equal to new vector3 transform.position.x restrict y and transform.position.z. Now if we hit save, let's take a look and uh, see how this plays. Oops and I have some invalid arguments. So if I double click it, it will take me to where my error is and it will show me. So what's the error it's actually saying I have? Low flow of load has some invalid arguments. Cannot convert Unity Engine Vector3 expression to type float. Okay, so the problem we have here is that I'm trying to put Vector3 variables downmost and upmost in uh, mathf.clamp and it says, no, I don't want vector threes here. I only want floats. So we can't actually use these exact variables we calculated, but they do contain the data that we want. But have no fear, there is a way that we can uh, still fix this. So what we need to do here is declare a couple new variables and we need to just call this private float min y and max y. Now I can declare both of those on the same line, save myself some space. And over here, in this, underneath the start, I'm just going to say min y equals downmost dot y. I'm just taking only the y value of downmost and storing it in that float. And now I'm going to say uh, max y equals upmost dot y and storing it in the value of that float. Now if I go back here into the uh, restrict y, I can change this to min y and max y. So basically I've just converted these from vector 3s to floats, fulfilling Unity's very strict requirements. So my bad, but there you have it. Now let's give that a try. Okay, now we're working. Now it's in business. So if you look, I'm staying within the play space, but it's still not perfect. As you can see, uh, the paddle is going halfway off the screen. And the reason for that is because the paddle itself is calculated uh, where its pivot point is. And the pivot point for our paddle is uh, right here in the very center of the object. So there is a way that we can fix this though. So if you look back into our uh, PowerPoint here, full screen for me there we go what we can do is we can use something called get component to let our script to talk to other components of the game object that it's attached to and what we want uh, to do in this case is talk to the sprite renderer where we actually look at how just how uh, much height our paddle has so if you look here under the sprite renderer it has some built-in values 
based on uh, its height. And the other thing we're going to need to do here, actually, in order to see some of what those values are, is add some components. So we're going to add in here, just and start typing, a box collider 2D. And this is how Unity detects collisions when things are colliding with it. And this immediately shows us just how uh, high and how wide our game object is. It's 0.4x in width, and it's 2.4 in height. So basically, we want to restrict the paddle from moving about half of this value, half of this y value over here. So if we go back into our script now, what we can do is we can go here and we can uh, give ourselves one more float and type private float half height. And here in the start function, we can say half height is equal to get component, and this is the way we get a component. I want to get the sprite renderer that's attached to this game object. So in these uh, open close brackets, notice they're like the greater than less than signs. I type sprite renderer, and then after them, I do open close parentheses. And now what I want to do is get that actual uh, height value of it. So the way I do this, I'm just going to show you, is by typing dot sprite dot bounds dot extents dot y. Now I know that's a lot to type to take in, so let's just go back to Unity for a second and go over what the heck all of this means. So let's open Unity. I want my script to be able to talk to this sprite renderer component that's attached to it. So I type get component sprite renderer. It now has access to this. Sprite renderer has some built in components attached with it. One of those is called bounds, and another one is called extents, and another one, and then the y is simply the y coordinate. Now it's a little hard to see through here, but if I, ha if I click this uh, arrow under info in the box collider, we can see that these components exist under the box collider as well. We can see it has bounds, dot extents, dot y. So I'm basically just getting that value here. And uh, really you can see the extents value is equal to uh, half of the height. So that's why I'm calling it half height because uh, that's what bounds dot extents is. So now, now that we have that value stored in a float, we can basically do some simple math and we can restrict the paddle from moving within the appropriate play space. Now, I'm going to give you a challenge and see if you can figure out how to do that bit yourself. So, I want you to pause the video and see if you can place that half height float into the right positions to keep our player paddle perfectly on the screen. And as a hint, you'll have to use it twice. So pause the video and give that a go. Okay, welcome back. How do you do? You figure it out? So let's take a look into Unity. And right here where we have our min y, I just want to say plus half height. And right where we have our max y, I want to say minus half height. And now if I hit save and I go back into the script and test it out, there we go. Perfect. Our paddle is now restricted within the play space. It can only move up and down in this area here. And there's just one final thing. I just want to show you what I was talking about in the last video with these uh, sprites that I had rotated. So even if I put this one on here and then I gave it uh, rotation by 90 degrees and then I put our paddle, our script back onto it, uh, player, ah, what was it called? Player paddle, attach that on here, give it a value of 7.5, and I hit play. This one would still go off the screen, and the reason for that is because it would be calculating the y values, but in this case, the y value is only from left to right, or uh, the top to bottom, because it's rotated. So really, it's just giving me half the, what looks like to us, the width, but is really half the height. And that's where it just gets really, really confusing. And I thought that it was even confusing me. So I thought, let's not deal with that. Let's just import the sprites correctly from the get-go. And uh, sometimes that is the best way to go. You, 
just make sure you import things correctly the first time. And also, if I had uh, taken a look at what a Pong game looks like before starting to design it, I would have known that and saved us all some hassle. So, a lesson learned, but there we have it. Paddle is restricted within the play space. Have any questions? Let me know. Sorry, this was a confusing video, uh, but that is how it works. Hopefully, you were able to follow along for the most part. See you in the next one.